Hey guys, welcome to video number 46. I just had a quick laugh before we started shooting because my wife, who is not at all really an animal person, I mean, she loves animals, but she's not really an animal person. She just said to me, honey, don't make sure you don't stand in front of the pack of discus. And I kind of had explained to her, it's called a school of discus, but I, I appreciate the effort, honey. Um, anyway, welcome to video number 46, guys. And actually, you know what? speaking of discus, I'm having a territorial issue with my discus. So any of you fish people out there? So here's my question. I currently have eight discus right now. They're always picking on the smallest one. Should I just leave it how it is right now with the eight discus and let them pick on the smallest one? Or should I add more discus to the tank? I don't want to change the uh, decorations in a tank. I don't want to add more hiding spots. I kind of want to leave it how it is. So again, should I just leave what's in there and just leave it the way it is? Or should I try adding more discus? Hopefully they'll uh, start being less territorial. I know they're cichlids and it's going to happen, but let me know your thoughts on that. Um, oh, very quickly, today it's been 30, actually that's not true, it's not been 35 days, it's actually, as of today, this is a big deal, it has been 36 days, guys, today, since uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife has killed one of our uh, harmless reptiles, so it sounds like they're finally starting to be able to tell the difference between uh, a boa constrictor and uh, one of the prohibited species, so it sounds like they're, they're learning some of the basics about uh, reptiles and hopefully they'll keep up the good work and maybe we could even make it to day 37 which would be really exciting. Um, so video number 46, what are we going to talk about today? I really want to get into the differences between northern emerald tree boas and Amazon basin emerald tree boas. I love Amazon basin emerald tree boas. I always said if I could just keep one species of snake it'd probably be them. They're, I have to admit they're my, they're my most favorite animal. And uh, But I want to get into the differences. I know you guys always have questions about pricing, husbandry, size, temperament, um, you know, captive born versus Im importation. I'll get into all that stuff with you. So why don't we just jump into video number 46 in the differences between Northern Emerald Tree Boas and Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boas. Hey guys, so let's talk about the differences between a Northern Emerald Tree Boa and an Amazon Basin Emerald Tree Boa. What's the catalyst for this video? Well, I just, I had a bunch of uh, baby Amazon Basins for sale. And I got several emails with people saying to me, Gary, your babies are beautiful, but they're thousands of dollars. I've seen emeralds at shows for $500. What's the difference? And I explained to them there's two different species, right? One is an Amazon basin, which is from the Amazon basin of the Amazon River. That's, this is the Amazon basin emerald right here. This girl happens to be in a shed. This is a three-year-old female. She happens to be in a shed. And this is a almost five-year-old female northern um, emerald tree boa, right? So that's right off the bat, you can see the physical differences. These have the beautiful, the, the lightning bolt pattern on them. And that pattern, they're basically born with that pattern. It's going to look exactly like that, except um, so unfortunately, a lot of times the white along the neck area on a northern will fade out with the base and they continue to get more white scales as they get older. Actually, I was just speaking to Ed Marino about this. And... Um, Ed basically explained to me with Amazon Basin Emeralds, it's usually up until about the third or fourth shed that most of their white scales have come in. So once you get beyond the fourth or fifth shed, whatever white they have, they're going to have at that point. Um, and it also, he also mentioned to me the on the laterals, okay, on the uh, striping here, these laterals. Those, whatever they're born with, um, that's pretty much what they're always going to have. When new white scales come in, it's really going to do more with the striping than on the laterals. So when you're picking out Amazon Basin Emerald Babies, um, you know, especially if it's, I could show you actually I bought some babies in a little bit that are lower white animals. And I'll show you some of the differences between the lower white and what's going to be probably a higher white uh, Amazon Basin. So anyway, that's the main differences between the Northern and the Amazon Basin as far as appearance. Amazon Basin animals get much larger also. Again, that's a five-year female compared to an almost three-year female. So this girl's going to continue to grow. And uh, within a couple of years, she's going to definitely be bigger than the Northern Emerald. Now let's talk about pricing, okay? Amazon Basin Emeralds are just far more expensive than Northern Emeralds, and what's the reason why? Is because these are still available as, as wild-caught animals. I mean, uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of are imported into the United States every year, so it literally just has the numbers way up on them. More supply, um, you know, and uh, they can fill the demand, so which unfortunately has a lower price tag on it. Amazon Basins are only available as captive bred and born babies. And that's the difference. When you see a baby Amazon Basin available, at least you know it's captive bred and born. It's usually not the case with the Northern Emerald. If you see a, a red baby Emerald available Northern, again, most of the time it's going to either be uh, an imported baby or it's going to be perhaps a baby that was born from an, uh, a wild caught adult female that came and grabbed it. So those are the two ways you're going to, and, and also, as I mentioned, you're going to see tons and tons of adult 
emerald tree bow is uh, northerns import it, right? Wild caught animals. If you do not have experience with those animals, I again, I made a video on that. Um, just be very wary. I mean, they're amazing animals, and uh, if you have a lot of experience, you may be able to get them to come around. But they are known for chronic regurgitation syndrome when they come in as captive, as, as come in as wild caught uh, imported adults. So always be wary of that. Um, so again, what else leads to the uh, price difference is um, besides the, the far less of supply of Amazon basins. Keep in mind, guys, an Amazon basin emerald is going to take to, to reach maturity. It's going to take her about six years before you're able to breed an Amazon basin emerald female, right? So. Uh, think about the time investment that's involved to get these animals up to size. So you can't import them as wild-caught animals. They take forever to get up to breeding size. Also, the northerns, you know, take a while to get up to breeding size as well, but there's still far more of them coming into the country. So it's just simply a supply and demand thing. There's a lot less of them available. And I wish that wasn't the case because i got to tell you, as I mentioned earlier, this is my most favorite animal out there to work with because they're just their actions are just so deliberate. And I would say an adult Amazon basin is almost like a spiritual animal. And uh, I just love them, and I wish they were at a price point where everybody could at least have one in their collection because they're you just have to have one. You'll see what I'm talking about. I wanted to continue with that conversation I had between myself and Ed Marino about the coloration of babies. And again, Ed, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. If you guys don't know who Ed Marino is, I'll put a link to Ed's. Uh, his, he's on Facebook and he's on Instagram. I'll make sure I put a link to his animals. They're pieces of art. I don't know. If you guys know who Ed is, it's his animals are just, they're off the charts. Um, and that's the best way to describe them. I, I can't describe them. That's the best way to describe them. So check Ed's animals out. Anyway, let's continue along with the um, with babies. So when you're picking out an Amazon basin animal. So what I was mentioning earlier is if you look at this animal, there's not much to the striping on it, right? This animal is only about eight weeks old at this point. You can see it has the white laterals here. So we know, you know, based on my conversation with Ed, they're not gonna get any more scales in the white laterals. However, along this whole entire neck area down, you could already kind of see it coming in already. You could see some white scales coming in. And I'd be willing to bet, even though it's a pretty low white animal at this point, I'd be willing to bet by the next three sheds, something in that area, it's gonna continue to put size on, it's gonna continue to shed out. I'd be willing to bet that's a complete uh, white stripe to this baby. So when you're picking out animals too, oh, she's okay. When you're picking out animals too, that keep it, you know, always keep in mind, look at the parents, right? Just like when you're buying jungle carpet pythons. If you're looking at Amazon Basin Emeralds and they, there's their uh, low white, the babies to look at, you wanna get a sense of, you know, what they're gonna look like as adults, always look out the parent, at the parents, that's another great indicator. So let's put this one back. There's a sibling to this animal and as you can see, same age and everything, but you can just see this animal already has almost a full stripe on it. Has even better laterals, a full stripe. So we know that animal is never going to be a high white animal. It's just not. Um, but it could still have a decent amount of white to it. And this animal sibling, you could already see the beautiful laterals on it. Almost has a full stripe, and that's going to continue to come in over the next three or four sheds. So when you're looking at babies, you just got to be really open-minded, especially if you're trying to save money. Because what it comes down to, guys, is the more white on a baby, the higher the price is going to be. And I see that because you know everybody has a different budget. If you're looking to spend a little less money, I'd be willing to take a roll the dice. I'd buy an animal that a little less white, hoping that there's a pretty good chance a lot of the white is going to come in. So let's put these two babies back and just for size. I just want to show you, these, these are two-year-old basins. These are both males. I just want to give you guys a, a sense of, they grow very slowly. Keep in mind, we're only feeding them every 10 to 14 days. I'm going to get into feeding really quickly. But uh, So these are a couple two-year-old males, and uh, these were not very high white animals when I got them, believe me, and the white really came in a lot, so I'm super happy with these. Guys, okay, here's another female basin I just took out, also in a shed. That's a three-year-old female. And this is the sister, the other northern I had out. This is her sister. You can see how pretty she is also. And by the way, both of these northern emeralds I'm showing you guys, they were the product of uh, imported uh, wild-caught female northern emeralds that came in gravid, and I bought a litter of babies, and the babies just do really well. So that's the origin. This one's captive bred and born, of course, the basin, and this is, again, this was the baby of an imported wild-caught female. So um, as far as challenges with keeping both, which is what I say, is it easier to keep northerns, easier to keep basins? The husbandry is really the same, guys. I'm feeding my babies every 10 to 14 days. I'm feeding young animals probably in the area of every 14 to 21 days. I'm letting them have three male, no more than three males, three meals without a defecation. As far as husbandry, they're very similar, okay? So what makes one easier to keep than the other? Well, the reality is that northerns tend to be prone. I mean, captive bred animals have a much less chance of this happening with, but they tend to be more prone to uh, regurgitation. Um, whereas basins, honestly, they're, I would say, 
arboreals in general, if I'm rating them on a scale of how difficult to keep, one being the easiest, two being semi-difficult, and three being the most difficult, I'd always raise rate arboreals as threes because they do have their own set of challenges. You know, you could have been keeping carpet pythons your whole life, and if you had never had an emerald or a chondro, it's a completely different animal to keep. Um, so in general, I'd say they're both threes as far as difficulty, and the one thing that makes it a little more difficult as far as northerns than basins would be the fact that northerns have that they're prone to uh, regurgitation. Um, so you got to be really careful with them, and you don't want to overfeed them. Where you don't tend to have that issue uh, with basins, they don't seem knock on wood. They don't seem to regurgitate. You know, and with green tree pythons, they tend to either get respiratory infections or prolapse. So that's what makes arboreal so much fun, guys, because there's so much there's so much more challenging. And if they were easy to be keeping and breeding, everybody would be doing it. And the reason uh, that they are challenging is that's why there's always a shortage, and that's why the prices of these animals, especially for captive born animals, are always so high. Um, as far as temperament. You know, Northerns have somewhat of a reputation for being somewhat aggressive. I don't know. I think because that was back in the day they got that reputation from being all imported. I don't really see that as much anymore. Um, at night, both of them are, you know, if I go in their enclosures, they're looking to take a whack at me because they're in feeding mode. Other than that, though, as far as temperament, I don't see much of a difference between either one. I don't handle my animals, but um, overall, they're pretty sweet and they're pretty mellow. And, uh, you know, I take either one of these over, say, a Bioc locality green tree python that even during the day, it's going to take a whack at you. So I hope that answered a lot of questions as far as uh, which one is more difficult to keep and just as far as temperament. Last, let's talk about a size with these animals. Just for size comparison, that's a five-year-old northern emerald tree boa. And this is a four-year-old uh, green tree python, okay? So um, a green tree python, that's a male. I'd say he's probably about 500 grams, 450 grams. I'm going to say this girl is well in the area of about 12 or 1300 grams. And when you're comparing Amazon basins to northern emerald tree boas, these animals get big, guys, these, these emeralds. I'm telling you, an adult female emerald can easily hit six, six and a half foot. And the same with an Amazon basin. I had two Amazon basin females who are about 16 years old. I'm telling you, my biggest female stretched out were about seven feet. And I only mention that because they do need large cages. I mean, I, wouldn't, I would not keep an adult female, northern or uh, Amazon basin emerald, in anything smaller than, like I say, a 48-inch enclosure. That should be at least, I would say, 24 inches high. Okay, and at least 24 inches deep. They do get very large, much as you can see the size difference again between the green tree pythons. Um, so when you're considering these animals, you know, you can't stick them in like a, you know, a 24-inch cube. A lot of people like to use a typical traditional 24-inch cube, 24 high, 24 deep, uh, and 24 wide on the um, arboreal cages. And it's just too small for an adult uh, female northern or Amazon basin animal. So again, keep that in mind. Last thing I think I failed to mention were temperatures. I keep all my basins 83 to 84 degrees, even my babies, just like my chondros, you know, 60% plus uh, humidity in each of the enclosures. If your animals aren't shedding properly, there's not enough humidity. That's the easiest way to tell if you have enough humidity or not. So again, nothing really difficult about keeping either one of these animals. It really just comes down to your source. If you're able to get in the case of Northerns, captive bred and born babies, or at least imported babies from wild caught females that were gravid, you start out with solid animals, you shouldn't have any issues with them. And again, with the Amazon basins, we, we know they're only available as captive bred and born, so anyone you get, um, again, as long as from a reputable breeder, a reputable seller, you shouldn't have any issues with it whatsoever. But these are just amazing animals, guys, and uh, I don't know if you, many of you I know haven't even seen uh, Amazon basins live, and if you do get a chance to see them, you'll just see exactly how the, the scalation and the white um, on the, uh, the dorsal striping, um, they're pieces of art. They're really amazing, and uh, I always say it, I, I love chondros, and people get upset with me. I'm a chondro guy. I've been keeping chondros for almost 30 years, but if given the choice between one species to keep... Uh, as far as uh, snake, for me, it would always be Amazon Basin Emeralds. And I hope you guys are able to get your hands on one um, in the near future. Okay, I got to show you guys some really amazing emeralds in this video. So now look, here's a ball python. Just because I know you guys probably want to see a ball python. Um, I love this animal, by the way. I think it's so cool. And I love ball pythons. I really do. Um, hey, thanks so much for watching video number 46. As always, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my videos and comment down below. I try to answer, answer every single question you guys answer. Ask me in my videos. US Ark, US Ark Florida, as always, they always need our support. Um, donating to Brian Barczyk's Legacy Aquarium Fund. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. And I can't wait to see you guys in two more weeks on video number 47. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?